Hey guys, I'm Ryan Wright. And I'm Katie Dubois. We're gonna watch from Watch Mojo today. Top 10 movies, way too upsetting to watch twice. I'm a little frightened. But your Serbian film will be in there. There shouldn't be a second time around for these films. He will strike her until her flesh is burnt and meat and blood flow equal. I will kill every on my side. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies too upsetting to watch twice. I'm gonna be a Whack! For this list, we're choosing emotionally upsetting films based on their plot points. <laughs> no! 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 And not because they're horrible productions or completely gory. That means you, the human centipede. Oh, I didn't. Oh, God, I didn't see this. Oh, God, I never finished because this. We may be discussing the final outcomes of some of these books. A spoiler alert is probably in order. Number 10 The Passion of the Christ. Is that twice in the video? <laughs> Epic in nature and devastatingly depressing, Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ looks at the final hours of Jesus Christ's life and the relentless violence he endured. Never for you, God. Never for you, God. Viewers may want to drink a couple of extra glasses of wine before first viewing, but watch what you eat because it may just rise again. None of the other come. Come I've seen this movie so many times in total. This is a film you prepare for, process, and never, ever watch again. Peter! Number nine, Brokeback Mountain. That's Back offensive. <laughs> it was a beautiful movie. I, I will watch that again. Yeah, tonight. that's pretty messed up. To see. No more. Gay cowboys, heartbreak, ten gallon hats. Are you not entertained? Moviegoers filled theaters to watch Jake Gyllenhaal and Heath Ledger fall in love, but 134 minutes later, they left speechless or in tears. Sometimes both. We could have had a good life together. A real good life. Had us a place of our own. But you didn't want it, Ennis. So what we got now is broke back now. The line, I wish I knew how to quit you, has often been parodied over the years, but who can forget the raw emotion of the original screen delivery? I wish I knew how to quit you. Oh, Brokeback, many did quit you because we didn't want to go through that all over again. Get the f off me! <laughs> Number eight, The Mist. Oh, we're so sad. <laughs> Mist? This film inspired numerous face oh, bombs God. and no, maybe even a few bathroom accidents. Stop. Based on Stephen King's 1980 novella, the Mist features, you guessed it, a horrific mist, along with monsters that don't necessarily arrive in town for a cold beer with the locals. You stole anything! Asshole, you got that kid killed, and I got a fing butt on me! As tensions increase, a supermarket offers protection for David Drayton and his son Billy. And although The Mist is darker than your typical horror film, the final moments are simply depressing. I say we drive south as far as the fuel takes us and try to get clear of this mist. You are a sick person if you want to watch this film again. Sick. No! Number seven, Dancer in the saw, Dark. I never I never finished that film. I'm going blind. An Icelandic singer, an electronic music oh, legend, and the movie. infamous director Lars von Trier. This musical Fucking drama Lars seems von quite Trier, a man. Song tune. That is, Christian unless buttons. you find dark stories of immigrant persecution a happy subject. Bjork won Best Actress at the Cannes Film Festival for her performance as a Czech woman with a secret. And her inherently haunting yet beautiful voice takes on a whole new meaning by the film's heartbreaking finale. And scars on kittens. Pick your poison when searching Lars von Trier's filmography. Chances are you'll be crying uncontrollably by the end. Number six, The Green Mile. Take my hand, boss. I bawled so much when I you saw this for yourself. Has there ever been a happy movie about death row? Director Frank Darabont makes his second appearance on our list with a movie about a prison guard's painful past and the ubiquitous grief that never leaves. Don't put that tag on my face. Don't put me in the dark. 
told through flashbacks. Paul Edgecombe recounts his experiences with a giant prisoner named John Coffey and his ability to heal or take away. There's lots of folks here that hate me. Lots. During the final minutes of the Green Mile, audiences were crying buckets full of tears and contemplating what it might be like to be a wrinkly old person filled with regret. I was 44 the year that John Coffey walked the Green Mile. Such a heartwarming story, but such a sad one. <laughs> Number five, Irreversible. Le temps détruit tout. Told in 13 scenes, shown in reverse chronological order, Gaspard Noé's film produced some of the most disturbing images ever seen in mainstream cinema. <laughs> but hey, it stars Monica Bellucci and Vincent Cassel, so it can't be entirely oh, depressing, he's right? An asshole. Well, not exactly. Roger Ebert once called this film, quote, a movie so violent and cruel that most people will find it unwatchable. A couple of guys set off for revenge after the movie's character is raped, and, well, somebody definitely pays the price. It's not hard to miss. Irreversible cannot be unwatched, nor should it ever be watched a second time. <laughs> Number four, Blue Valentine. I saw this twice. I didn't see this. I missed it. It's pretty hard. Hey girl, how would you like to watch my 112 minute film that will make you choose to stay single? Which makes you insane. I fucking love Ryan Gosling, man. I know. Crazy. Featuring two of today's finest actors, Ryan Gosling and Michelle Williams, Blue Valentine chronicles a couple's downward spiral into booze and aggressive facial hair. This is the dream. While the romantic drama does include some lighthearted scenes and improvisation from the actors, the film as a whole will make any happy couple reconsider the future. You can call me stupid. I'm so out of love with you. I've got nothing left for you. Nothing. Nothing. It's a blue Valentine, after all. A reminder of how brutal people can be. Do you know I give you this ring? As a symbol? As a symbol? Of my solemn vow. Of my solemn vow. Number three, Requiem for a Dream. You were right. I could understand that. Yeah, most of it. Somebody cue the sad trombone, because this film includes nothing but despair. When did you start taking the pills? Some. In fact, the characters in Requiem for a Dream somehow manage to find themselves somewhere akin to Bob Dylan's Desolation Row as they experience a slow uh, yeah, descent think, into uh, yeah, drug addiction, just, psychosis, and prostitution. I won't be running the streets my whole life, my sneakers all ripped up, my nose running down to my chin. Darren Aronofsky's film about these struggling Brooklynites will make you reconsider those minor outbursts of daily life. <laughs> I don't think they'll be putting any more dope in that arm. It's intense, bleak, and unforgettable. But we wouldn't say rewatchable. One. <laughs> Number two, 12 Years a Slave. I could watch that again. I, of course, it was... Confess. That's really good movie. Given the title, one should not expect well Steve McQueen's period drama to be a jazzy production or screwball comedy. I will not fall into despair. I will offer up my talents to Master Ford. I will keep myself hardy till freedom is opportune. Based on the memoir of Solomon Northup, the heartbreaking 12 Years a Slave tells the story of his journey through slave markets and features extended scenes of torture. Oh, eggs. And my life. Although its message comes across painfully clear and allows viewers to reflect on America's dark history, the worst scenes will cause some to check out, mentally and physically. 12 Years a Slave is a powerful film that is also sure to make people cry in public. <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Okay. There is another who has the joy of having a live rat sewed up in her vagina. <laughs> Yes, 911. I can I'm buried. You have to help me. You have to help me. I can't breathe. Sir? I'm buried in a coffin. Please help. Like, I think it's slowly opening up now. People's minds, like, um, educating and, and AIDS and, um... She's a great actress. Come on. See you. Oh. 
Mm -hmm. You're my angel. <laughs> Just like women needs to be left alone sometimes. That's why I tell Hoppo, I hear or some cousin all the time, leave me alone. Ain't you gonna get it for me? Is there something the matter with you? Number one, Schindler's List. I can see that again. Showcasing innocent people in danger of being systematically taken out in the world, Schindler's List is an essential piece of cinema and a harrowing account of World War II, much like the equally sorrowful World War II flick, The Pianist. Steven Spielberg's film highlights the efforts of Oscar Schindler, who saved the lives of over 1,000 Jews by giving them jobs at his factory. I hear your name goes on the list and they put you on trucks. And no, 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 that's not true. Schindler's list is sad and difficult to watch, but it's most certainly based on real events. <laughs> by the historical drama's end, most viewers will simply choose to move on and learn from the experience. <laughs> Do you agree with our list? Yeah, we got a what movie do you think is way too upsetting to watch twice? Oh. Oh. For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I'm not contradicting you, but may we re-examine one asset I noted that seemed to me to look especially pleasing? Well, I heard about that movie. What is that movie? Uh, they're all in a prison, and I, I forgot the details, but it was pretty disturbing what I read. I'm surprised that Train Spotting's not on there, and I'm surprised that Jacob's Ladder's not on there. I think it's disturb encompassing movies that are like disturbing and also like graphic visual style yeah. too. Like their number ten's Passion of the Christ. I personally really admired a lot about that film. I, I mean, I saw it when I was in eighth grade. I was really moved by it. I thought it was a really good mm -hmm. film. I don't want to go into all the spiritual stuff, but. I'm not, like, I wouldn't call myself, like, uh, belonging to a religion or a Christian or something like that, mm -hmm. but I still like the film a lot. I thought the direction was great. The cinematography is awesome. There's beautiful music. Some people might go, oh, it's just violent, but it's like, that's where the story is. It's in the violence. Yeah, I okay. just I just love Mel Gibson, too. I wish he was in it more. He, 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 was, he put the nail on, on Christ, and that was his hand. Mel Gibson facts. Why'd they put Brokeback Mountain on this list? I think because they wanted to cover a large range of why people couldn't watch a movie a second time. I think that this is the tear-jerking movie. I've seen Brokeback Mountain twice. I, it's I've... a beautiful, I could watch it again right now. Yeah. It's a beautiful movie. We could watch this again anytime. We're going to, goodbye. That's how good it is. That movie, Irreversible, I've seen this movie on a several lists, but he's just punching Monica Bellucci in the face. That, that disturbing, you can't even see it, but oh my God, it's so disturbing. Well, and I think that the very end of the video, they showed another yeah. Irreversible <laughs> clip of, beating I think, the guy. yeah, the revenge moment, and that was really, messed up too. I'm very revenge driven. I wanted to prove that you could become successful on YouTube by doing as little work as possible. I think you've done it. And I've done it. Welcome to the Reaction Channel. And Blue Valentine, I, I had to watch that twice. I love the performances so much. Yeah, I think that's the kind of movie you watch and then you watch again and you get more from it. Yeah. You don't have to feel like you have to like close the door and walk away forever. But I heard they live together for a month. That's awesome. Yeah, slept in the same bed. Probably even fucked each other. Maybe. Most likely. If you really want to get into character, you gotta have sex for your co-stars. So my girlfriend taught me. I understand and respect it. And like, same thing with Schindler's List. Like, Schindler's List is such a beautifully done film. I could watch it again. Just, I know how like disturbing it is and Maybe how like, heartbreaking it not is. not twice in a row. Maybe you need a moment to recuperate. Yeah. You want and to catch another done. matinee of Schindler's <laughs> List? Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in to the channel. If you're new to it, you can subscribe to The Real Rejects. You can check out Katie Dubois' channel. It's a fun channel with fun shit on there that she shits and it's fun. You should uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And uh, I have a Vine and a Periscope, because um, I'm better Ooh. than Katie. Follow us because, um, uh, I don't know, I don't want to do the product placement bit. You could sing about the products, like a jingle. You could have your own jingles for the products. Okay. The speaker is green, makes you feel mean. Burst out like Charlie Sheen. You feel like you're 13. You feel like a feeling. Okay, that's probably enough. This video needs to be less than 15 minutes. Okay. Copyright strike.